Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica with Memory Box Candle Co. And I make videos all about the journey of starting a candle business. And today's video is going to be the top five things that I am going to be sharing on what really has elevated and completely changed my product photography. Now I have been practicing and I'm basically an amateur when it comes to product photography and photography in general. I've taught myself everything and kind of figured things out along the way, but the progression of my product photography for my candle business has really changed and evolved over the years. And I just really wanted to highlight five things that really contributed to that. One thing that I'm not going to add into the five tips for this video is the equipment that I use. So the fact that I changed from an iPhone to a camera and then I upgraded the lens, all of these things are just something that yes, it has made a huge difference, but even when I got a nicer camera and a nicer lens, it still took me quite a bit of time of implementing other things that go into the product photography process because it's not just about the camera that you are using. There are other contributing factors that really make a difference in your final product. Hi, it's me. Just interrupting this video real fast just to let you know that I do offer a handmade business planner for any business owner that is looking to get organized. I have a digital planner template that you're able to use to help with organization, planning, and structure within your weekly routine. I know how overwhelming it can be, and this has really, really helped me. So if you're looking for something like this, go ahead and click on the first link in the description box below. Tip number one is lighting. How important is lighting? Lighting is everything when it comes to photography, product photography. I've learned so much about lighting and how important it is. I used to try to take pictures um, in my kind of like my dining room area of my apartment and I would have a bunch of different, uh, you know, type of photography lights on it and I would be kind of, you know, squeaky in the middle of it and taking pictures. And the photos did turn out pretty good, but there is a certain look to photos that I can really tell when there is proper lighting or not. Um, and there is this kind of, I don't know if it's like a shadow effect or something on the products that I can really tell a difference when I have proper lighting or if I am um, just kind of artificially kind of putting lighting in there. Now there is a proper way and a really good way to be able to utilize photography lights, studio lights, um, things that can really bright it up to where you can't even tell that it's artificial light. Um, but I just did not have the correct setup in that way. So now whenever I take product photos, I always make sure that there is some sort of natural light coming in in combination with my photography lights as well. So on one side of the image, I have the natural light coming in. And then on the other side, I have the um, photography lights, the you know artificial lights, you could say, um, coming in on the other side so that it kind of balances it out. Um, and it really brightens up the image because the better the lighting is when you're taking the photo, the better the overall outcome of the photo is going to be and the easier the editing process is gonna be. The second tip is to utilize as much as you can any kind of backdrop, photo boards, anything like that. I use replica surfaces. I know they're on the pricier side, but man, have they really elevated my product photography. And just the fact that you're able to make it look like your product is in like a completely different room, a completely different home, and you don't have to actually go and take pictures in a different home or anything like that. So because I live in an apartment and it's not really the best photo friendly area to be taking pictures, I like to use these boards because it makes it look like my products are in just such a nice clean uh, area and it just makes the photos look really really nice and uh, it doesn't clash with the products or anything like that. You don't want to have backgrounds that are going to be clashing. Uh, a lot of just kind of, you know, mix match designs or loud designs or anything like that. Um, I really am a fan of replica surfaces. They have like the 
uh, the scapes or whatever. So they have like office scape, kitchen scape. Those ones are kind of my favorite ones. Um, I got started in the beginning with like the marble, the subway tile. I still use that as well. Um, but I really have been a fan of um, the scapes and the one where it actually kind of looks like your product is in a completely different area and it looks really, really realistic. Um, and it completely changed and elevated my product photography. Tip number three is just something that I used to do in the past all the time, and that was overexposing my image um, when I was in the editing process. And editing in and of itself is definitely a tip in here as well of just kind of learning and understanding the editing process. And for me, I actually uh, thought that I was really, you know, brightening things up and making it look really good. And then I look back at those photos and it was just way too contrasted. I turned up the exposure way too much. I added way too much brightness, way too much whiteness, just trying to bring out that. And at the time, again, I really liked the pictures, but then as time went on, I realized that I was just using that exposure way too much um, and just trying to edit it, like over edit it, basically. I just tried to over edit it. Um, and that's definitely something that I don't do anymore. I do like to brighten up my photos if the photo calls for that kind of editing and it's gonna work for that. But overall, I like to, you know, have some of that kind of softness to it, the grays, the beiges, just a little bit more soft. I mean, my old photos that I used to do, I literally used to like, white out the background. On some of my pictures, I remember taking my iPad and like actually going through and erasing the background image. This was before Canva was able to do that in just a click of a button. Um, but I used to do it on my iPad years ago and I had that very high contrast, which was a look at the time, but looking back now, I like the subtle softness not everything has to be like literally black and white, you know? <laughs> so um, definitely learned in the editing process to not overexpose, not add too much brightness, and just try not to over edit. Tip number four is I learned that I really needed to continuously play around and change up the props and the scenery and um, you know the angles where I'm standing. There's so many different little things that you could change that make a world of difference in the actual end product of your photos that I just, I, I didn't know in the beginning. I would just kind of be very stagnant in one position the entire time. And I found myself just taking a picture of the same image, like the, the same stance, I didn't change anything and I would take like 10 to 15 pictures of it. And looking back now, I'd scroll through and I'd be like, okay, this looks exactly the same. And now I'm kind of like changing angles, going up, going down, getting leveled, like trying to see which one is going to be the best angle. I'm turning things, I'm moving things, I'm adjusting the props, I'm you know changing up the fabric or the backdrop or whatever it is, like there are, things that you can do that's constantly changing. And um, even when I've watched uh, photography videos before of like actual, you know, people taking photos, the model is not just kind of standing there making the same pose and taking the same picture. Like they're constantly, you know, like moving around different angles and stuff like that to see what's gonna look best. So you can kind of take that and be like, okay, I need to constantly adjust things and see what's going to work. And that's really what kind of gives you the experience and gives you the knowledge in the moment of what's really going to work. And when you're looking through the lens of your camera and you're seeing, you know, where are you angled at? Where are the products angled at? And you can kind of pick and choose and, and adjust little things here and there. And then when you're looking back on your camera roll, you can really see the, the variation and see which ones you like the best. So keeping moving was definitely something that I've learned that really kind of changed things with my end outcome of the product photos. And then the very last one I just wanted to throw in here, um, I have been doing this for quite some time, but I did also want to throw it in here because it definitely helps to save time when it comes to product photos. Now, I know that this is not an option for every single one of you and all of your businesses, um, just because everybody's product is going to look different and not all products can be turned into mock-ups, but I personally like to 
take pictures, find one photo that I love, um, and then have that turned into a mock-up. If you're not too certain what a mock-up is, a mock-up is basically, it's one picture that can have different edits on it. So in this case, it'd be different candle label designs. So I will throw up a bunch of pictures right here. So all of these are the exact same photo. It's just, I went in and adjusted the name of the scent and you can't even tell that it is you know, edit it in. That's definitely something that I didn't want. I didn't want it to look like you could tell that it was edited in. So what I do to create my mock-ups now, which is uh, way easier than what I used to do in the past, I think I used to use like PixArt or something in the past. I used to use something. Now I go through somebody on Fiverr who is like my main guy on Fiverr. I go to him all the time for different jobs. Um, and what he does is he just basically turns that picture into a Photoshop mock-up to where I'm able to go on. He did all of the work on the back end and it's basically like a template on Photoshop. So all I have to do is double click on a certain area, add in a new label, save the picture, and then continuously do that with all the different scents. Um, for me personally, I like doing this. I know that for a lot of people, um, they'd prefer to just take you know different pictures of their product and maybe you add in different props and stuff like that, which is great. Um, I do have quite a few scents, so it's easier for me to just do the mock-ups um, and then everything you know, is cohesive and stuff like that. So it's kind of something to where if it works for you, if it's something that's going to work for you and your business and it makes sense and it's something that you want and that look is what you want, um, then maybe you know look into possibly getting your photos turned into mock-ups. Um, but if not, then I would say just practice and you know work with taking photos of all of your different scents that you have. But those are the five things that have really elevated and changed my product photography. Um, I will say that I am very, very happy with how far I've come from the very beginning. It has taken a while. It definitely takes a while. Um, and uh, I highly recommend that you give yourself patience during this time. There's a lot to learn. And also, if you don't want to take your own pictures, you can hire somebody and that's totally fine. I've even thought about doing that as well, um, just to have different variations because I even find myself that probably my biggest struggle is having variety or variation in my product photos. A lot of times I like to use the same props and kind of the same boards and stuff like that because it's just it works and I like it a lot. So it'd be really cool to have somebody else give their input on what they think would be kind of, you know, a good photo design. Um, but with that, I am going to end today's video right here. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave it a big thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at Memory Box Candle Co. And I will see you in my next video.